Bye. Bye, baby. Bye, guys. Be careful on the way home. It's gonna be a 30 mile an hour wind. Is it? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No idea who couldn't quite locate or explain. No idea who couldn't quite locate. Before I get started on a construction today, I wanted to talk about tackling big projects and overwhelming, overwhelming. So this tiny house build is not only very exciting, but also very overwhelming at the same time. I've never done anything like this before. The only thing that I've done is I've just researched it a lot. And yes, I was an electrician, but you don't learn how to frame a house and build a house being an electrician. You just learn how to run wires. So even within the past week, I've been, uh, I've been like stressed out about this. Maybe I'm not really showing it on camera, but definitely behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that I don't, um, I don't know 100% about building a house. So it can be very overwhelming to undertake a project like this because I don't know everything. I think one of the things that I was doing that was causing me to stress out so much is I was thinking so far in advance and not really focusing on the task at hand. I'm already trying to like figure out how to like install the windows and stuff when I don't even have any walls up. Knowing how to do those things are certainly important and having a basic understanding is good to know right now but knowing with every little specific detail is not really beneficial for my own sanity <laughs> to know to know that right now like it really really doesn't matter so what's most important is like what i'm doing today and to break this big project into a lot of small projects so for example today what i'm doing is I'm gonna trim out all this excess spray foam gap filler. I'm gonna put the final three quarter inch piece of insulation on top of the two inch here. Then when I'm done that, I can actually start working on installing uh, the subfloor. So I don't need to think about the roof or the windows or anything like that right now. I've got a plan and I just kinda need to follow the plan in the order of action. Let's get started the installation. Like you okay to explain. Like you, like you, like you, like you. So as you can see here, I've got all the insulation in the subfloor. So the insulation went in pretty smooth. There's a few pieces that I might cut a bit out just because it's sitting a little bit too far um, above the actual level of the, uh, of the subfloor itself. So what I'm using for the subfloor is 3 quarter inch um, tongue and groove plywood. Um, so I've got a 3D model in SketchUp to know exactly how I'm gonna lay everything down. And to prevent having squeaky floors, um, everything's gonna be screwed and glued down as well. So on all the joists, I'll put a bead of adhesive down and then we'll just uh, slap the plywood on top, screw it down, then we're hopefully not gonna have any, uh, we're not gonna have any squeaky floors because that's never, that's never any good. Also on top of that, gonna make sure that there's at least an eighth of an inch uh, between all the seams and all the gaps. Wood can expand and contract. If you have the subfloor butted up like exactly against each other and say the humidity changes or the temperature changes and the wood expands. So if there's no gap there, what could happen with, uh, with a change in humidity or temperature is that the wood will, can expand and as it expands into each other, the floor will actually start to like buckle and raise. So that's why you leave at least an eighth of an inch gap between all the sheets of plywood. So I'm gonna get a few of the sheets down first and then I'll show you how I'm doing it. So I'm cutting this piece to go around the wheel well. So this is the good side, good side, good side. This is the cut side, cut side, cut side. So I think I'm just gonna start my cut uh, down there, come down to here, do a plunge cut right here, and then finish off this one right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dry fit all the pieces first before I fully screw them down and glue them. I'm 
is just putting in a few screws just to uh, hold everything into place. So you can see I've got all the subfloor sheets just laid out. Um, these ones aren't screwed down or anything. I just wanted to kind of get a bit of an idea of how everything is going to go together and uh, how the spacing is going to work. One reason why I don't want to screw down the first row of plywood is because when I put the when I put the glue down, it's going to set overnight. And if I wait till tomorrow and I try to do the whole floor uh, within a few hours, the glue isn't going to be able to set fully. And why that's important is because when you're using tongue and groove this is the tongue side and then on the other side there's a groove like if I need to get this edge like a little bit up maybe about a sixteenth of an inch or so but I can't do it because it's screwed and also glued down I can't really like lift this edge up very easily I want to do it all at once so that I'm not um, having to pry up the plywood after the glue is already set it's also almost about two o'clock right now so I'd rather just kind of like do it all in one day, get it done, and then I know that it's gonna be good. And I'm not gonna come back the next day and try to fandangle uh, some pieces together. So I'm really excited to get this subfloor done because when you finish the subfloor, you get to start raising the walls. That's really exciting because then like the whole house is like, it's starting to take some shape. So that's really awesome. So I'm just gonna clean up and then head on home. Look at who I found. I'm still alive. She's still here, still kicking. <laughs> Not like it'd matter if I died, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would be devastated. I know. Yeah. And speaking of devastation, I remember like about a year ago, or maybe a year and a half ago, year a year and a half ago, I was eating like a tremendous amount of fruit, like bananas out of the wazoo. Like okay, bananas okay. and dates, case of bananas a week, half a case a week, three quarters a case a week, like whatever, right? Having like all these smoothies. And now that I eat like pretty much 100% starch based, it's like <laughs> there's no fruit consumption for me. I eat like at all. I'm just not a big, like, I think because I ate so much fruit for like three or four years, and I'm just like, ah. I'm just not, not feel, like I love, I love fruit, but I'm not like, I wouldn't go out and buy fruit right now, really. I'm just more of the rice and lentils kind of guy right now. I like fruit, but I only maybe have like one fruit meal a day, maybe. It's yeah. usually like maybe five a week. <laughs> <laughs> Four or five a week, once or twice a week, every once in a while. It's very interesting how our diet has changed so much. Like I feel the same too and I think I actually feel better. I used to feel so like jittery and like yeah. I don't know, I just didn't I feel much I feel much better not eating so much fruit. Like sugar is more stable. Oh yeah, much more stable. That's how I feel. If I have like a if I have a smoothie bowl I'm fine because usually I add like pumpkin seeds and granola and like all that kind of stuff to the top, which I think the fats kinda of stable out your blood sugar a little bit. But if I just have like a ton of like a big banana smoothie, I'm just like shaky. Starch base for the win. Who doesn't want to eat fries and rice and beans and stuff all day? Though? I know, it's so good. You know? It's just like, and then you don't have to worry about like ripening times and like. Fruit is like a great snack. It's like the perfect snack because it's like sweet and you can take it anywhere with you and it's in its own packaging and you're not like throwing away plastic and crap, you know? Yeah, it's really good.
good. But starch is kind of a hard snack. Like you can't really, you have to cook it. So it's hard to just, like there's a girl that lives in Tucson that I'm coaching right now. And she's kind of having problems with like eating cold rice and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the best thing that you can do for your health is to invest in one of those mini rice cookers and just cook fresh rice for lunch. She's like, people have coffee makers at their desk. Like, why can't I have a rice maker? I'm like, yeah. exactly. You cook potatoes in it. You could heat up soups in it, cook your rice in it. Like, you never have to eat cold rice and cold potatoes again. Yeah. What I would actually recommend for that, this is what I do, because um, once you cook rice and then you refrigerate it, it just like dries it out and then it's shit. So like, if I cook it in the morning, and I'm taking it to the job site with me. I don't refrigerate it, and I just yeah. eat it lukewarm for lunch. Yeah, and warm then, then it then it's good. then it's totally fine. But once you like refrigerate it, it like hardens up, and yeah. I just like that's just game over. We basically always eat room temperature food. Like we'll have room temperature rice with cold stew or whatever. Like we don't yeah. heat anything up unless no. it's something that I just made that day and it's warm and we have it over room temperature rice or we just have rice right away in the morning when it's cooked but yeah. everything that we eat is like room temperature <laughs> yeah when we have like a fully fresh meal of say like red of uh of say like red lentil chili and fresh rice like at the same time that's like the best meal ever. like amazing but doesn't it doesn't happen very often though but i just ate a big cup of white rice with sweet chili sauce on it the rice was still pretty warm though because you just yeah. cooked it which is like my go-to meal when I need some carbohydrates. And I'm like, I'm going on Mount Lemon tomorrow, I need some more carbohydrates. <laughs> and then I had a thing of yogurt with some granola on top, and then for dinner I had a freaking burrito, whatever, like, just everything is like lukewarm, you know? Yeah. All right, we are rambling. We gotta cut this one off. All right, we will uh, catch you guys on tomorrow's vlog. Talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.